Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sam Elliott 64 and welcome back to the Robocast. I'm joined alongside Steve the American Killjoy and World of Woodrow. And we are joined by guests for the fifth Bounty Hunters episode of the season for Witch Doctor. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Bunny. You are Bunny and you are part of the Malice team this season. Um, Bunny, welcome. It's been... You've been around for a few years. Obviously, it was mentioned very early on that you were with the Shatter team once upon a time. And obviously, it goes actually goes further back than that. You were with Rex way back in season Absolutely. one. Yes, I started at, in Combat Robots itself in 2002. And then I was there for the original reboot of BattleBots on ABC. Absolutely. And obviously, you know, you've now kind of been put front and center with with malice how did you find the change from going from being one of the team to being the the, the focal point if you like because it, it it is a different kind of environment obviously it, you have a camera put in your face quite a lot more <laughs> yeah it's absolutely um you know it for me specifically it's not exceptionally different except for i don't get to do as much on the bot at the actual event but for me i'm a very um relaxed captain and I, I very much run my team like a democracy so everything is uh, I trust my team more than I trust myself and and so I really rely on them a lot to do what they know how to do I mean it seemed to work because obviously Malice for a first time entrant has done very very well this year like as much as maybe the, the comp main competition didn't quite pan out the way you would have wanted it to and you went out in the round of 32 was it against Gigabyte? Yes, it's, um, it's but you know, a we didn't. Performance. Yeah, uh, we didn't actually go to BattleBots with any intention of winning the net, and um, we had many discussions about this as a team. And we very much decided that we were going to go for the design bolt, <laughs> which <laughs> that didn't work out. But we yeah, tried oops. really hard. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Very it's no part, You know, we don't. Um, uh, as a team, we don't have any problem with not accomplishing a goal as long as we did our best and we tried and we did everything that we could to enjoy the event itself because this is at the very end of the day a hobby it's not something that i feel like should be a job it is a it is a job in its own right but it not it shouldn't feel like a job it should feel like something you love to do and if it doesn't feel like something you love to do it, you shouldn't be in the sport. Yeah, yeah, that's a good uh, way to think about it. Uh, and you, you definitely, you, yeah, you definitely brought a, a very original-looking design. I know that it's a scaled-up design of a beetle weight, or it is uh, a beetle weight and an ant weight, um, animus and odium, by David Rush. Yeah, um, and he's so fabulous. He designed the weapon for the big one, and he put a little bunny face in it for me, which is sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Isaac did all the FEA testing and did all the rest of the robot uh, design f to scale it up because it's not a simple one to one scale. It's it, there's so much more that goes into a heavyweight than goes into a beetle weight. Things that work in beetle weights do not work in heavyweights. Um, so, yes, it is a scaled up version, but it is a completely different robot than Odium or Animus. Yeah, it's, it's very very cool. <laughs> we were. I, I will say, uh, if you go, if you ever, if anybody, yeah, if anybody goes back and watches the preview that we made, we were a little worried about Malice. We were worried about its wheels. We were worried about frame, and we're we were. About <laughs> we're always you are worried not about alone. new things. All those wheels were you are not <laughs> alone. I cannot tell you how many builders, other teams, came up to us and said our wheels would not work, and came up and told us that our through bolts would not work or and came up and told us the titanium dowels that hold our two aluminum frame pieces uh the billet frame pieces would not work so many people doubted malice quite a lot did you at any point um not me <laughs> i was so <laughs> for isaac you don't understand how much i love isaac like he is my favorite designer and my favorite builder like we think uh, he it makes robots that i would want to to build a reality. Um, but uh, some of our team was really concerned that that first time that we would go into the arena, the whole weapon would just explode. That's why we really didn't plan on going for the net. And when we made the competition, the, the final tournament, we were really shocked because <laughs> we, we, uh, we definitely we're going in with this as an experimental, like, let's see if it works. And when it did, yay. <laughs> yeah. You guys put on quite a show in the bracket, that fight against Giga Gigabyte, even in a losing effort, you guys survived all the way to the end. 
you're jumping all around yeah. at the end, win or loss. It was it was fun. And it then really this, ep- did, this episode, yeah, go ahead. yeah, it really did prove our drive system is capable oh. of ha- handling any hit. Even this though episode proved was, your drive system by mm. far none by that far. it is yeah. something to be feared. <laughs> yeah, and the weapon, even with the exposed wheels, the yeah. weapon was that all fixed after the gigabyte fight before bounty yes i spent eight hours grinding <laughs> and welding and having um the wonderful lincoln electric guys weld extra and then taking it back to the grind tent and gr- i did that all by myself let me tell you because <laughs> well, we wanted to give the team yeah. a day off so david Lau, who is the owner and you know he's like the co-captain he's like the he's so fabulous he does like all the like stuff that i can't do at the event because i have to go and do interviews or whatever you know what i'm saying um so he he and i came in on the day off but we wanted to give the rest of the team a, just a rest day because it's so physically tolling to be at battle bots yeah, um so off. yeah it is it's it's six 16 hour days for two weeks you know it's it's a lot so we wanted to give the team a day off so david Lau and i came in and he got all the speed controller stuff worked out which is when we switched from the vex dbs to the castles um and i spent the whole day grinding that <laughs> getting that back to brand on, new on your, fa- on your yeah. facebook page on facebook, incredible. go and have a look because yeah it was a, it was a sort of full eight hours without exaggeration like it oh, was yeah. a full eight hours of work it's it, honestly the, the the state of that disc. I'm amazed about it to salvage it at all. To be honest with you, I, I, I like when I first saw it in in this episode. Like I thought it was a second, but clearly not. It was. In, in, we actually do have two of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> was, we yeah. wanted them both. Well, you spent to be so much time running, fixing that one. <laughs> yeah, we we just wanted them both to be up and running just in case because Battlebots sure. is a game of attrition as well. So Absolutely. you know, uh, we did want them both up and running. But yeah, the the design of the the weapon is so lovely, and you know, Rush did such an amazing job making sure that works. And you know, he again, that's something he learned in the smaller robots, which we really do support on this team. Starting off with the smaller robots and then moving your way up to the larger ones because you do learn a lot even though not all of it is comparable what you can learn in the small robots just it can change what you can do in the big robots it was one of the learned that, that from yeah pete oh, go said ahead. when he came yeah. on um and ray and too. Ray, yeah that if you can sort of if you have that background in even just attending competitions and going through a competition format you learn so much about what goes into repairing a robot in between fights and what what work you need to do and keeping a robot running for that amount of fights if you manage to get that far into the competition that is um it, it's just such good groundwork to have under your belt before you try something big like absolutely. Uh, battle bots absolutely well we are here to talk about battle bots bounty hunters the fifth episode obviously if you haven't watched it now is the time to click off and go and watch the episode because this one for <laughs> me so far is hands down the best one way up there it's, yeah it was, it was so so good. so good every fight yeah. was good yeah all I mean, the robots in this bounty were so exceptional yeah yeah that, 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 that is... possibly one maybe early on <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get see. to the, we'll get to that well the, the first fight of the episode was valkyrie and extinguisher yeah Poor extinguisher. <laughs> yeah, poor oh, extinguisher. Deary me. I mean, Valkyrie has at this point already won the giant bolt for most destructive robot, so you know what you're going to get when you fight Valkyrie. Poor extinguisher did not know what was going to hit it, did it? it that that was it. A titanium wedge. They, they kind of. I know it's not their go-to wedge, is it? They, they, they've got the, the beautiful cherry red one, which they normally use, and. This one is, you know, I'm fairly sure they said in the in the interview before the fight it was made at the event. Yeah. Oh dear me. <laughs> it just sheared right off. Whatever was yeah. bolting it onto the frame just sheared immediately, uh, and the wedge was gone. Both sides. Uh, yeah. Both, both sides. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> that that sour Caroline blade really dug in and just ripped it straight out. Uh, Ooh, Valkyrie looked and, mean as well with that green blade as well. Yeah, it's a different yeah. look for them. Valkyrie is so exceptionally powerful, and the the best thing about Valkyrie is how reliable she is. I mean, Leanne has made that robot where it just doesn't stop, you know. So it you can put as much armor as you want on a robot; it's going through it. It doesn't matter what you do; Valkyrie is going to come and take it off. We saw that against Rotator earlier in the season. The Rotator just it is renowned for being a tanky little thing, and it just it eventually just waved its flag and said no more, and off, off the back came. <laughs> Yeah, 
there's so much force that goes into those large horizontal discs. It's it's amazing how much they can do. And you would think that they wouldn't be as strong as verticals because you know you're losing half the force when you hit because you you don't have anything to brace against. So half of it's not even going into your opponent, but it's actually just so strong and so powerful and Valkyrie does it to perfection. There is no improving on that re- weapon on Valkyrie. She's just always reliable and she always knows what she's doing. It's so lovely. Mm-hmm. Especially this season. Like maybe in the last couple of years, it hasn't necessarily had that reliability, whether it be drive or weapon, one tends to tend it to break. Whereas now it's like, it's quite the machine now. I, I feel like it was unlucky to fight Whiplash twice. And I think... Mm-hmm. Had it had a different draw, like pretty much anyone else, I'm fairly sure it would have given them a, a good run for their money. Like, you know, poor Valkyrie had to fight two people twice this year. She had to fight Sub Zero twice. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> and she had to fight Whiplash twice. That is so unfair. Yeah, yeah it's rough. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, as for Extinguisher, it's definitely one to chalk up for experience for young John. I mean, yeah. we, we saw, you know, Leanne helping John with his college work, which was really nice. <laughs> that to was see. awesome. <laughs> um, the amount of online learning that was going on at BattleBots this year was just <laughs> amazing. You see pictures all over Facebook of people sat doing virtual lessons in the pits. And I think it's, it's a wonderful thing to see because if ever you were going to be in a room full of people who know what they're talking about, it's the people at BattleBots. I mean, if, you, if you're doing some sort of engineering or something in school, you know, a DT project, whatever... Good battle bots. You've got some good expertise there. <laughs> <laughs> Except Absolutely. for that's how you get flagged for cheating. <laughs> so like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Very These true. Were too a bunch correct. of engineering students doing? running around the pits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the moment of inertia uh, is hang on a minute. Yeah. Um It was yes. it was a it was a wasn't necessarily a good fight, but it was a good exhibition of what Valkyrie could do. We elected it, it me. Was. This is one where we were probably all right in saying that the wheels were I think any fight where there's two robots that work is a good fight yeah yeah one one thing i want to make a note of and i i don't know if it's just just me being a a butt but they kind of valkyrie kind of goes into this fight expecting to win and i that kind of makes me feel bad for for extinguisher yes maybe the robot hasn't performed perfect perfectly at this event but it, it, it 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 was one of those moments where like Man, if you say that on TV, you really could end up with egg on your face. <laughs> you could, yeah. That's <laughs> you the, know that's a risk with every fight. It doesn't matter. It, you could be fighting one of the worst robots in the world yep. and still come out wrong. That's it happened this year happens. with Extinguisher and Gruff. Uh, they right. didn't go in probably expecting to. Who knows if they went and go and expected to win that fight? But they got beat. Uh, so it's 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 interesting. Uh, I, My... I think we had to wait. <laughs> we had to wait one more mm-hmm. fight uh, to see what would happen with Valkyrie, but we'll get there. My favorite quote from Ray and Paul, uh, both of them say it, the most dangerous opponent is always your next opponent. Mm -hmm. And And they always say that. And it's really true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never know what can happen in the box. I mean, anyway, I mean, you you guys are are embodiment of that. Prime uh, examples. Prime (laughs) examples. (laughs) We'll get to it. We will get get to it. it. We will indeed. Fight number two, again, similarly kind of one-sided, but I think Pain Train was really hurting by this point. It, uh, by Pain Train were fighting Sub-Zero in this fight. They didn't really get much of a chance, bless them. I think they were struggling on one side throughout. Now, we've been talking all season about robots with quick turnarounds. If you want yeah. one example of a robot that has possibly the quickest turnaround in build, they were literally building it on the, on the normal walk stream, stream. Yeah. before BattleBots. Uh, I think that was either... It was like three weeks before, even. wasn't it? It was ridiculous. Yeah, crazy. Um, pain Train, bless them. They have, <laughs> they've worked very hard on this robot, and uh, I've already been having chats with uh, the team, and they have told me some of the upgrades that they're going to be making for next year. It sounds very exciting indeed, and they have the time to work on it as well, should they be. What if exciting? you give them four weeks? You never know what they'll make. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> What's the, the week all the difference? The, the thing yeah. is, right, with, with Pain Train, uh, um, it's the guy's name's Evan, isn't it? It's Evan Arias? Evan Arias. Evan Arias. Aaron Arias. Yep. And um, Anthony phenom- D'Ambroso. Yes. Evan is a phenomenal driver. If you've ever seen any of the Norwalk Havoc streams out there, listeners, you will know that he wins time and time and time again with Shred I mean, It Bro. Shred It Bro has won three uh, of the Norwalk events in the last year. Um, Which is and there haven't ridiculous. been that many, to be honest. No, I think, it's, I think it's three of the last four, isn't it, that he's won or something ridiculous like that? Something crazy. I think... 
He won the last one. Let's, yeah, let's, did, let's just say that much. He won the last one. <laughs> he won the last one. Uh, or did he? No, there's been two this year. So no, he didn't he win the, the last one. one this year. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and he won two last. I'm coming year. for him this this next one. <laughs> I'm coming for him in May. <laughs> there's oh. a lot of competition looking. I think isn't the May one full? It's very exciting. Yeah, 30, uh, three pounders is full. Oof. It's 80, uh, 80 competitors or something like that. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Mouser is one of them. I'm gonna yes. come for him. I'm gonna come. Yes. For him. <laughs> and uh, as we say about the egg on your face, I cannot beat shredded bro. <laughs> but I'm calling him out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. If, if you get the win, then you never know, right? <laughs> you never yeah. know. I beat Jameson and I was shocked. I mean, I, you yeah, don't understand. Hey. I mean, Nelson went deep into the competition when it last competed. I was shocked. Like, I went up to Jameson before. I was like, well, thanks for destroying my robot. <laughs> and then I won. And I was like, oh, no. And Jameson walked up to me after, after and he was like, you're never allowed to be nice to me before. <laughs> 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 that's fantastic but yeah, as, as you said it, it just goes on you could never underestimate your opponent and I think that's true that, that's why I think Sub-Zero Pod's such a clinic here because they, yep. they knew that if they like when they fought um, Jackpot their first fight they had to fight under control but then they just lost mm-hmm. yeah. and yeah, absolutely it can it can go that way anytime and you know they, they had to make sure that pain train was done and they did and it was a very clinical win from Sub-Zero yeah. it was they exceptional did, uh, Sort of similar tactics to how Rapid uh, beat Terahertz in in Robot Wars Series Ten, in that they held off on the flipper. They got sub. Uh, they got shred, Pain not shred it. Pain train. That's why <laughs> shred it is in my head now. And Rapid fought shred it, bro. In the, in the perfect position in the arena where they wanted to flip them, and they flipped them. And it was a similar tactic that they've used, um, or they tried to use all the way through this bounty. I think that they they found a way of how they can control a fight and you know it worked yeah can i just say the mvp of the fight is the drone who yeah. got hit <laughs> and carried on it's just like yep. brush that off amazing all right 100 and yeah. whatever Easy. the last yeah, drone Spitfire is probably the longest running running drone in all of mm-hmm. battlebots he has been yeah. there as long as uh, i mean any other drone he's so good he's so exceptional i really love spitfire i love drones okay we'll talk about it later but i want to pin that i love drones and i want to talk about that later so Absolutely. okay i think I, I think i know which moment it's going to be as well exactly we'll, we'll, i think we'll you know it. exactly where this is going <laughs> mm-hmm. okay well before we get there fight number three Bunny, take us away. Your fight with Trace is very, very different in this fight to what it has done all season. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yes. So, again, these horrible Vex BBs. I just hate them. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, we did lovely with Tracer. Um, we uh, did exactly, you know, something they edited out of the Tracer fight. We actually pinned them uh, against the wall. And, you know, it, um, they edited it out completely. So, we were very dominant in the tracer fight we come out uh we hit each other they take out our weapon because um we oh my gosh we used these serpentine belts and it was a mistake and you know like unfortunately you cannot make we made completely custom pulleys for malice and you cannot that is one thing you cannot change at the event no matter how hard you try you cannot make custom pulleys at battle box you just can't (laughs) um so we use these serpentine belts against the advice of martin mason who told us to use kevlar b belts and he's so brilliant we should have listened to him (laughs) but (laughs) that's okay so uh we just kept having issues with our belts because we would hit and the the pressure from the hit would just split our belts um, because they were too tight um, and they would stretch out if we got far enough into the fight, like we did with Axe backwards, it would stretch out and and we could keep the belt. But with the other uh, fights, we just never got enough time on the belt to stretch it out, to keep it from destroying itself when we hit. So we are going with Kevlar V belts next year. And for Malice V1, we have created new custom pulleys to run Kevlar belts, uh, two of them to be exact. So we, if we lose one, we still have the redundancy, which is great. Um, so we we got through, and of course, our drive system is on point. Oops, and anyone so who has, fight. yeah, anyone who has doubted our drive system just cannot doubt it at this point because our drive system was worth every penny that we spent on it. And so we push them around, and we get them stuck in the wall. And we actually pushed them into the wall and they released them, which is technically not supposed to happen. If you pin someone, they're not supposed to release them. We, we don't care. 
Yeah, we don't care because we want the fight to keep. Going. We don't. I have Isn't zero this a cares cash event? That. What's happening? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so we we don't mind that they release them, but um, a- after that, they you know they just uh, their drive is so fantastic and wonderful, but they have some issues with their. I want to say it was their speed controllers that went out um, and made them made their drive stop working. There's but it could have been, you know, one. yeah, that? we we hit them really hard and we actually took the side of their AR 500 and bent it. I mean, like completely mm. bent it. And all of their armor panels are completely um, separate from other drive, uh, other armor panels. Oh, it's such a brilliant design. They're all floating panels like none of them are like stiff they're all floating and they're lovely but i think that us ripping the one off also like made the other one go into their drive a little bit but don't quote me it was such a blur and um (laughs) so they just they lost their drive and they got counted out i stopped rush from hitting them because he wants he is so like bulldog he just wants to keep hitting (laughs) he seems that way he seems very intimidating (laughs) he just wants to keep hitting and that's also something that happened later that we'll talk about. <laughs> um, no, he loves he loves going for it, which is great. It's such a great mm-hmm. attitude to have. It makes the bot even that much more fun to watch, honestly. I think if they if you didn't have a driver as aggressive as David, I don't think it would be as entertaining. He, oh, he just absolutely. goes he just goes balls to the wall and just oh, if the yeah. robot dies in the process, yeah, whatever. <laughs> our our armor is our weapon. That's our yeah. that's our motto. Just mm-hmm. full send, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um Tracer how do we review its first season? Considering it wasn't meant to fight in 2020, it was meant to be a right. 2021 entry in the first place. I think mm-hmm. you've got to really consider it fairly successful. It got a couple of, I think, a one win, two wins, one win. It, be, it, one beat, win. Bell, it beat Bell Spear, didn't it? Yeah, it did. And then if you look at who it's I... lost to, you've got to consider they're actually pretty high end opponents. It's a it's a very powerful weapon, and I would say that every time that they lost or nearly every time that they lost, they seem to learn something from it and redesign the robot on site to try and fix that, you know, gets turned over by a ribot. Okay, let's stick little wheels on the, and ears on Top. like all the other verts use and uh, then they can drive upside mm-hmm. down. Oh no, we've mm-hmm. been stuck on our side. Okay, let's put little triangles out the side, wings to stop us from getting stuck on our side. You know, they're, they're learning from, from mistakes or from um, just time running out of time to design. Yeah. Mm. And even in this mm-hmm. fight, they had this lovely sort of little front wedge thing uh, that just fed straight into the vert and it was a nice design choice and worked quite well I would say until uh, until their weapon went down as well it worked well until it didn't yeah exactly <laughs> sometimes That's it do be sport. like that yeah it do be like that <laughs> it really do let's talk about fight number four Darth Huge against Slapbox. <laughs> well, stealth. Darth <laughs> Huge. <laughs> huge. <laughs> huge. Huge is the most wonderful thing. And I, 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 I love Huge so much. Me too. This fight was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. It, it had yes. any right being. I think throughout the competition, I mean, you know, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure you can probably tell me more, but... I think Huge was having weapon problems throughout the entire season. Like, it just didn't have the same punch, if you like, than it I, normally did. I think that they are just so hardworking and so, like, I, it just gets so hard to keep that weapon to its full potential. You have to have, like, a sheer force of will just to keep going on battle bots. And I, I don't know. I think it was going great, but, you know, I don't. I don't like to talk about other teams. I, guess, I, I, know, I know what they go through. It's, it's, it's yeah. tough because, like, you know, obviously, without, you know, Huge is one of my absolute favorite battles. And, you know, we, we, I think all three of us really have kind of yeah. loved watching Huge for the past few seasons. And, and mm-hmm. it's it's sad to me that a lot of teams are now starting to figure them out. And I think that's yeah. another thing which has I really kind that. of kind of opened things up. But, you know, we saw in this fight, Slapbox had the really long tongue coming out the front and it just, it, mm-hmm. it got it, hold of Huge a lot. It. it got such a good hook on one of those axles. Mm-hmm. That was, I, think I don't Slapbox even know if they is also very that. underrated. Slapbox yeah. did really well for their first season. Like, they yes. did so good. 
Yeah. yeah they, went, they went about a minute with Tombstone. That was, you know, again, not That's many That's amazing. Teams for on their, a, on their first for season. rookie team. <laughs> right? Yeah. Other rookie teams are being fed Tombstone as part of their regular main season. And we're like, yeah, sure, go for it. Why not? <laughs> it was... Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they did ask why me, but you know, they, they got on <laughs> They did it. ask why me, but who wouldn't? Who wouldn't for two weeks except for me? I want Tombstone. <laughs> Everyone else, why me? <laughs> yeah. I get it. Like, like yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think Slapbox is really underrated too. And, you I know, know I think huge is i think it was probably a little bit of combination of both it's just so exhausting and flatbox was was much better than people i think gave it credit for i think, I think in a season yeah. lacking duck it was nice to have duck um, agreed yeah. yeah and i think as well with, in, in this fight you know slapbox for the most part had had the fight i thought until about the last 20 or 30 seconds i don't know sam that first hit on that wheel that sheared it right off of that axle I mean, yeah. <laughs> perfectly fine with three yeah, and, yeah. And were, they didn't no need four one. wheels <laughs> yeah it's fine they perform better with three wheels yeah. than they did. i guess they, they were great they were fabulous <laughs> it was it was very good it was very entertaining this one like yes. it was, there's a lot of back and forth and i think the last 30 or so seconds where Huge really ramped up that pressure, it paid I off. I think we really saw Jonathan. Jonathan's been having trouble with the judges recently. He, he was stressed uh, out, wasn't he? Yeah, I think He's that really final hit in, on Slapbox was just to send it home and just say, you mm. know, please don't let this <laughs> split. Yeah, please exactly. don't let this go the other way because of a stupid reason, because the rules say so. Ah, uh, I mean, man. Everybody says that that last hit is a lasting impression with the judges. Exactly. So, you know... Yep. If you're running down to a judge's decision, you see that clock and you go, I have an opportunity here to hit them one more time. You're hitting them one more time. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I agree. <sighs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, which puts huge through to round two. Yeah, we'll get to that fight a little bit later on, but let's talk about fight number five. The rematch between Valkyrie and Sub-Zero in the same Sub-Zero. season. Wow. Who would have thought? Poor, first of all, poor Sub-Zero getting Valkyrie again. Again. <laughs> After getting... Let, let's be very speaking very of frank speaking here. of why me this is logan davis oh after his first God. fight he's like oh we're gonna fight valkyrie now sub-zero was yeah. absolutely trashed in that first valkyrie fight it was f- like it was a great effort from them in the first place you know they, they talk them about learning the from their mistakes wow they had oh my, yeah. around and did what they were amazing and reasons not to get complacent as well i mean mm-hmm. valkyrie when i think reasonably cocky into this fight thinking that you know this is another we've beaten before we'll beat him again they're using the sub-zero panel they use the plane (laughs) surely that's going to be extra impetus though for sub-zero because they i don't know if that's too was that just tv though was that like well let's go on with this you know what i mean but uh i thought it was quite good actually like you know say hey look look, look what we did to you last time what are we gonna do Uh, this time like (laughs) this is your last fight you know it was brilliant and and credit to Sub-Zero that, you know, they didn't have the triangle plow this time that they had mm-hmm. before and they went straight in with the wedge, they launched Valkyrie against the wall and mm-hmm. they kept the pressure on. Yeah, for that, that was the fight was beautifully driven in, in hand the entire time until Sub-Zero makes a mistake and they didn't, so. Once again using yep. those cornering tactics and just yeah. to keep bringing down the hammer. Mm-hmm. You know, once you've got them in a, in a area where you have an extra weapon that doesn't really need your robot to be in the way of harm um use it you know Bring oh my gosh home. and you know they had the cameras on me this entire fight and i felt so bad because i didn't know who to cheer for because i really <laughs> didn't want to fight valkyrie <laughs> let me yeah. tell you of all the people i was afraid of i was like i don't want to fight valkyrie but i didn't want to be like outright Go Sub-Zero! <laughs> and they have these cameras on me the whole time because i have to fight the winner sure. and so i was like i was like Yay, everyone! And they're like, "That's not what we want, Bunny." And I was like, "I was like, well." well obviously, you know, you've, you've obviously kind of answered my next question, which was, you know, I didn't know which way round the fights were filmed, but if you had the choice, who would you have rather fought? And I, I'm guessing it was, was still Sub Zero. Oh, it was Sub Zero. I don't want to fight Valkyrie. <laughs> I'll call out Tombstone all day long, but I don't want to fight Valkyrie. I'd rather be flipped around or tore up by Tombstone. I'd rather be flipped around oh, by Sub Zero. Yeah. Oh God, yes! I would rather. I would rather. Well, also, Sub Zero would have given us a chance to show off how wonderful our drive was. Like, yes. and so many people were like, "Your drive sucks," and I was like, "Well, let me show you." So Valkyrie would have just come in and taken my wheels off, and I would have been like, Whoa. Uh, "Well, the drive does suck now. I don't have wheels anymore." Yeah, it does. Um, it does now. But man, were they upset? 
when this fight ended. Oh my god, they were so oh upset. my god, so bad. Oh my gosh, so, well, so you know what? I am so glad though to see real emotion. Like so many, like you are allowed to have feelings, and I don't yeah. understand why so many of the fans get so upset when they see real, genuine feelings. Yeah. These are not how we are as people. These are how we feel in that moment and that's okay yeah. like there is yeah. nothing wrong Got a camera right if, in your face <laughs> yes hard. i know and like so many people want us to be like this completely humble all the time like oh, like wow, win or lose never mind it's so, i know yeah. it's so the silly to me you know in the arena not you be, you they want you to be 700 hours <laughs> of your life working on this making and, it your baby and the money and everything as well it, yeah and all the money and all the time and everyone's like oh my gosh they got a little upset oh yeah, my you would do you would too too if, if you, you if would too they do yeah. not understand how it feels <laughs> to be standing there and watching your life savings being torn apart or or lost right in front of you you know what i'm yeah. saying they just don't they and they can't they can't and you know i shouldn't hold it against them but i kind of nope. do sometimes <laughs> and it gets hard it's, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah they have no empathy just zero empathy it's one of those gray areas where, like, obviously, you don't want to see people being unsporting. That's that's obviously another matter entirely. But like, you you don't want to see people like, as you say, showing no mm-hmm. no emotion, like being kind of cold to the whole thing. You know, you, you want to see the personalities. You know, you know when mm-hmm. when when you guys were cheering at the end of the gigabyte fight, or you know when when you were you know we were so excited for them winning. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. and you were, and when you were punching <laughs> the glass against Mad Casa because you were so because gu- yeah. you're gutted that it just ended the way that it did. Like, it, that's oh no, I was cheering for them see. too. I was happy for them too. That was not <laughs> that was not gutting. That was oh my god! Yeah, you guys won. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we I mean. It was a great villains. moment. I swear to God, we are so super villains. Like oh my gosh, I can't even tell. So edgy, so edgy, <laughs> so edgy. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, you, you don't want to see people just turn up and say, "Oh, well, that's, right. that's that." Then you want to see a bit of personal, you know, a bit of grit. That's yeah, why people love, you, you know, as much as yeah. we've kind of said this season, you know, Jake's the bad guy. We love that. We love the fact that he's taken oh, this mantle. Jake. And I love Jake so much. He is so nice in person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, 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 he's been great as the villain this year. He's been wonderful to watch, and it's just yeah. things like that is what you want to see. Spot. He's still my villain spot. Well, you'll, have to, you'll have to beat him next season, right? I mean, next season, I'll have to come and hard. be like, who's the villain now? Jake, yeah. who's the villain now? <laughs> You're saying, Jeff. It's incredibly hard for, for you to try and be the villain. I mean, just showing all of your trash talking against um, the, the Act Backwards, backwards team. You know, we had agreed to that none prior. Of the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, yeah I believe it. Yeah, there, there was a whole yeah, other side had, to that. Kurt is so lovely. It. He's so, he's so in agreement with everything. He'll be like, "Yeah, let's do it." <laughs> <laughs> and, it, it and then they they cut all his parts. I was like, "No, come on, he was so fun." <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, no, I don't mind. I, I I thought I could be a really good villain. I tried really hard. Uh, <laughs> I still want to be a villain, but it's it's exceptionally harder than I thought it would be. Mm. Yeah, but about- anyway. Sub Zero I mean, in this fight. Sub Zero. Mm-hmm. My, my hat yeah. is my hat is off to Sub Zero. I mean, credit where credit's due. You know, as we said, they got minced by Valkyrie, oh. mm-hmm. and to come back. I mean, as much as it's you know, as much as it is a bit of fun and it is a hobby. Of course, you're competitive, and of course, you're going to go into this thinking, "Oh my god, it's just going to happen. The same result's going to happen again." Because but between seasons, you can make improvements. Sure, that's fair enough, but. In the same season, you're somewhat limited. You can obviously make improvements, of course, but you're very limited in, in what resources you have at the event and whatever else, you know, mm-hmm. what spares you've got. The fact that they turned so it around. Yeah. People forget that Sub-Zero is that, one of it was, the tankiest it used to be. robots yeah. of BattleBots. Mm-hmm. I mean, it for so long... With Logan the Davis as the team leader... Died. Yeah, with Logan Davis as the captain, everything is just going exactly how he expects it to and it's so lovely to see he just it's, knew what to do to make that robot amazing you used to go three minutes against sub-zero and mm-hmm. you know maybe sub-zero wouldn't come out with the win at the end of it but they were still running and now mm-hmm. they're coming away with wins it's um it is a real threat and oh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. you know even in this fight you see them just um, front flips you know just in the middle of the that day, was just... awesome that <laughs> was <laughs> weird physics sure. did you did you notice the malice batteries on the bottom oh he's so brilliant <laughs> and there's also a copperhead ba- battery it's copperhead and malice batteries because you know energizer bunny and duracell they're at the there copper tops oh, so the copperhead that. and the energizer uh, bunny oh good. it's amazing it was <laughs> amazing i loved it I loved uh, it. He's so brilliant. He messaged me and he's like, I have a surprise for you. I can't tell you what it is, but I need your logo. <laughs> I was like, sold. 
Let's go. Let's do it. I'll have to oh, look closer goodness. on the bottom of that fight to see her look to see it because now I'm, to see I'm, it. I'm sure I missed it. But that's awesome. That's you really really cool. Have, yeah, yeah. God bless Sub Zero. Um, shame for Valkyrie that their season kind of ended like this, but obviously strides have been made this season, haven't they? Really, like, oh, yeah. I, I, like I said, I feel like within a season they could be proper contenders. Like they're fine. They got a giant bolt. Yeah, they got. They, <laughs> yeah, they're they're on their way. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, absolutely. So fight number six is Malice and Huge. Um, this one was interesting. Yeah, talk us through this oh, one, buddy, because this was weird <laughs> yes okay so we took all the armor off the bottom of the robot we were literally running with uh like eighth inch titanium on the bottom of the robot because we didn't want what happened with shatter to happen again and so we were like okay shatter could flip us huge cannot flip us so we are taking the armor off the bottom of this robot so we have um stuff to cover the belt and so we took the uhmw off the bottom of the robot and stuck it on top of the robot and we get into the um, arena and uh, they we go at him. We're like, we're, uh, just hit the weapon, get it to stop, keep going. You know what I'm saying? And he, because they used that upper cutter blade, they actually physically ripped our five inch, five eighths of an inch AR 500, hardened freaking AR 500 and bent it. I mean, literally ripped it apart. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, immensely damaged and so our belt actually it wasn't the belt's fault that time (laughs) the belt came off it it was um it was ripped off by the weapon um it was amazing when your frame is like this and then all of a sudden it's like this the 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 belt can't stay anymore the belt (laughs) can't stay anymore exactly it was not the belt's fault that time it was actually them uh, their excellent design choice to use the one that could reach our weapon because normally they use a, a shorter blade right but they use the longer one to be able to reach our weapon and that was a good call on their part Mm. but we just have really excellent drive i mean really excellent drive um once we switched out the vex bbs for this for the castles our drive was just top notch and you can't you can't beat it because we have the grippy tires we bought the brazilian tires they were 350 dollars a piece we have 10 of them um and like it was (laughs) It's yeah. quite an investment. <laughs> it was an investment, but it was worth it because it's the only thing that could grip on that. Like we, yeah. us and Copperhead and the Brazilians themselves were the only ones who never had. Oh, and Whiplash. And Whiplash. Also yeah. the, Brazil, yes. the Brazilian tires. Never I think, had any. I think we could see a lot of teams switch over to them. Yeah. I mean, we, they, yeah, they I think we. I, I think I can see potentially. I agree. US manufacturing of them because they're going to become. I agree. Very popular. Yeah. yeah. Or you're I saying agree money. that. Oh, no, that's fine. I no, you're something. totally fine. I agree with everything you're saying. I think uh, like it's it's really important to note how wonderful those tires are. Um, so we just were able to, you know, we saw that our UHMW armor that we got worked perfectly. So why not use it? Um, <laughs> and also it really proved how well our through bolts hold up to overhead spinners and, and things like that, you know? <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. Um, so, yeah. We were just like, keep hitting them, just keep pushing them, keep pushing them around. They can't really do anything to us. Like, you know, like I feel bad, but it's true. I love huge, but they're doing <laughs> nothing. Let's get them. And yeah. um, Rush and his bulldogness, uh, Lau actually, you know, Rush was kind of nervous because the weapon was broken, you know? So he was like, mm. eh. and David Lau, who's just so exceptional. Um, he was like, just keep going at him. And so I was like, yeah, they got nothing. They got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and Rush was like, yeah. And, you know, we all got on board. We, you have to hype Rush up a little bit. He gets a little nervous and you have to make sure he's like, he's hyped up, you know? And so, <laughs> Interesting character development there. It is, you know, he, he does, you know, it's, he's always like that he needs he needs that cheerleader um so he, so we were like yeah they got nothing and we just pushed him around the whole fight and you know we we pushed him on the screws at the very end and like you said that last minute impression with the judges i think it helps a lot because mm-hmm. even though their even though their primary weapon was working it wasn't doing a ton of damage and we had all the agro- the concrete con- ah, control and aggression i apologize i have a stutter um that puts that can put you in the winner's cycle even if you don't have a weapon that works at the moment 
Bunny, you're looking at King Stutter right here. Uh, if you watch <laughs> any of these episodes back, my mouth moves faster than my mouth. That my mind, my mind does. It's all Same. mixed up. Yeah. So, Same. one thing I will say in this fight was uh, Huge's special new material. I mean, this the Tegris. Yeah, interesting it's, choice. It's an experiment. I think was was. I agree. This yeah, I mean, it's and, you know they've learned from it that. You don't make the back bits out of the tech, Chris. They were a bit more. They were a bit more. Again. Like, what's the, they're not rigid. What's the word I'm after? They, 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 they tend to, brittle. Yeah, they're, they're brittle. brittle. That's, that's the word. Yeah. And basically, the, against the spinner, they handled it okay. But you could see it was like flaking off a little bit more easily than the UHMW does. Well, we put we switched out to the purple weapon specifically for that because you know, like, it's important to be able to get that that bite into it. Whereas with Big Red, we would have just if we hit him, it would have just bounced off. That's why we switched to the purple weapon so we would have that bite into it. But you know, here at Team Mouse, we really like. I agree with trying things. There's nothing wrong with trying something and seeing that it fails. I know the fans don't like it. I get that. But I don't have a problem with it. And I'm happy that they tried something new. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, nothing vengeance, nothing Everybody's, game, right? Yes, exactly. The That's the thing. thing. It's yes. just a boring game. And we end up I agree. with everybody with four wheel drive vertical spinners. And <laughs> I agree. That's the death of robot combat then. So, um,. Yeah, try new things, and you know I agree. The and Tigris just back poles, you know, they're more fragile, they're more um, yeah. brittle. They need to be made out of the UHMW. The wheels they held were, up were quite good. Thing. Yeah, they were Apart, good. I think the, yeah. the only issue they had with that was the 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 treads were coming off, wasn't it? But, mm. uh, but other than mm-hmm. that, it was very very. I think good. if the treads had stayed on, they would have done a lot better than they did. I think that they yeah. need if they get. It. Yeah, if they had rubber coated it or something, I think if they and you know they it could turn out really great for other fights. Like I think it was just again, it's something new and you have to try it. Yeah. Yeah. Now before we move on, there was a little bit in the interview that I picked up on, which didn't really make sense until I did a bit more research and found out some more information later on. Where you mentioned you're both Mouser. Yes. <laughs> because obviously, huge, huge is sponsored by Mouser. Yes, mm-hmm. it's like our main, like, like buddy, like, hey, look, we're friends now. <laughs> <laughs> like Hypershock sponsoring uh, everyone. Hij- hijinks, everyone. Hijinks and Ice Wave. Yeah. And hijinks and Ice there, Wave. There you go, Ice Wave, that's the one, yeah. And Nelly, and Nelly Ice Wave, and, hij- and um, yeah. Hijinks, yeah, that's yeah. who they sponsor. And then... Yeah, so, yeah. Of, of course. So I own Mouser Mecha Catbot. The original, uh, yeah. the original Mouser Mecha Catbot. Lightweight. That's so cool. <laughs> right, which is why my three pounder is named Mouser. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, uh, I own Mouser Mecha Catbot, and it was one of the very first things Jonathan Schultz ever said to me, ever. He, he, I don't know how he found out. I'm sure it was from my Facebook profile, but he walks up to me <laughs> at the first BattleBots he's at. He goes, You have Mouser! We're sponsored by Mouser! <laughs> and I was like, Oh my goodness, yay! <laughs> <laughs> it was so exciting for me because I love Huge. Like, I've always loved Huge. It was such a, like, it's such a great robot. And you know my parents. Oh my god! Before my dad passed away, Huge was the only robot he liked. And so, um, and so it was super exciting for me to even like talk to Jonathan Schultz. I was like, yay! And, and then he's like, he's like, look, we're friends. And I'm like, yes, we are. <laughs> and and um, so yeah. So every time and uh, every time we bring it up, I'm like, hey, our sponsor. <laughs> even though I have nothing to do with Mouser, it's, uh, like Mouser is sponsor. But you know, if I wasn't scared uh, of copyright at this point, I'd put the song in. But I'm not gonna do that nope. <laughs> well also you'd piss Ray off and you don't want to do that views. <laughs> just think about oh, the monetization sound as you know I have possible. a whole box like a, like 144 of those CDs left and I feel like at the next BattleBots I should Give just out, include please. it with our with our competitor gifts like just just nonstop. just oh, leave them in gifts. places around the event and have them like search and find it's like an egg hunt you know all I'm saying is oh if, you, if you win Easter BattleBots in, in 2021 should it go ahead you need to sing that as you win it oh my gosh yes <laughs> that's gotta be I the bet. that's gotta be the bet now surely Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So I will do this. I will. If we win the nut next year, I prom- which again, we're not going for the nut next year either. We've already had this discussion. We're going for <laughs> most destructive next year. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Um, but if I win the nut, I promise I will sing the beautiful Mouse or Mecha Catbot <laughs> song, which everyone should Google. And it starts yeah. with pink. It starts with the word pink. Mm-hmm. I love my pink robots. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah. I think I'm fairly does. biased. Everyone I think I'm fairly does. biased. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Well, I also that- own Rex version one too. You do? Oh, cool. And Dr. Inferno Jr. One of the two, Jerome Miles owns the other Dr. Inferno Jr. Interesting. Yeah. Just, Interesting. just, just old robot wars judges just giving their robots away. You got, you <laughs> yeah. got Fon's old robot and also J- Jason's old robot. He's, he's yeah. <laughs> Fon's is the only one I purchased. Everyone else just <laughs> gave them to me. Oh, wow. Nice. Not the family tree, please. <laughs> oh, God. This is oh, no. include them in the family tree as well. We, we, we try to work out the, we the, the BattleBots team family tree. And I don't think that's ever going to be completely. It goes too deep. deep. I don't think it can. goes yeah. far yeah. too deep. I mean, the rabbit yeah. hole yeah. goes all the way through the center of the earth. Um, Especially <laughs> on my team. Like, oh, my gosh. Oh. David Lau and I, because we've been around since... We have both been around since 2002. So we just have... so, And he's not as like public about who he's been on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just like, here's everything. <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, I've been on some teams. <laughs> like, you know, so uh, he, like, we've just been on so many different teams. I think it's just be impossible to try to trace all of them. Mm-hmm. We've, we've tried. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and confirm. Well, we move on to the final of the all Battle the fun tournament. leads to this. Yay. Malice Yay. versus Sub-Zero. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Now. So, talk us through it because this uh, is hurt a little bit for for me because it was built because obviously both semifinals I think were we have to class them as shock results right because yes. I don't think many people had Sub Zero to beat Valkyrie this time sure. I think a lot of people would probably would have put their money on huge beating Malice and yet you know you upset the odds and here we are yeah. even interviewed Witch Doctor <laughs> they they interviewed both Andre and Mike and they did not expect this final to be Sub Zero Malice uh, so. I mean, it's not. Yeah. A, it's, it's, it's. I mean, it's. We're, hey, what are you gonna do? we're yeah, we were rookie rookie bot. It's it is what it is. You know. Yeah. I want to go in and say this was not the same mistake as what happened with Mad Catter. Uh, it was a completely new mistake. So yay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so what happened you, was you get to uh, never make it again. <laughs> exactly. It's n- now we'll find a new way to make it do this. Good R and D. Good R and D. So what happened was after the Mad Catter fight, everyone came over and said, "Oh, just slap a." Bowl on it it'll be great and so we did we put a little uh rubber bunny tail on the back of the robot and we tested it and it did not do the thing um but we had again those horrible vex bb speed controllers doing what they do and we were like you know what let's switch those out let's um what the real problem with those xbb speed controllers is that their bec will completely fail and so like the whole the whole speed controller will just shut down unless you use an external Kevin power. Like that. <laughs> I, I don't like it either. I think it's silly <laughs> because we don't have the weight. Like we just don't have the weight to put more. We were at 250. Like like sometimes yeah. if you blew on the scale, it would turn to 251 and the producers would get mad. Um, so we switched out after we tested to make sure it wouldn't do the same uh, to castle speed controllers for drive. But the castle speed controllers have a soft start function um, and they don't jerk as much as the VEX BB speed controllers. Um, and that caused us to not be able to tip over, even though we tested it and were able to tip over prior. But I also want to say, you know, our weapon is a it doesn't spin down quickly. It, it, we take the full 50, well, technically you get 60 seconds. We take 59 seconds to spin down and you cannot test that at weird angles in the test box. The test box, it's not safe enough to put your robot in weird directions and spin it up to full speed and see if you can flip over. I mean, you may end up with a deep six incident. If that's exactly. And you, no one wants that. We don't want to be unsafe. We'd rather lose in the battle box and be safe in the test box. Yeah. Right. So for, for me, when I watched the fight back before we started recording this, from from the way that you, you were kind of positioned on on your back, the, you can see the bolt sticking out of the back on the floor, but you, you also kind of rested just on the, I think it's the, the top of the motor mount, I want to say. Like, the E-Tech. The, yeah. the E-Tech cover. Mm-hmm. Just, just, just happened to be balanced on that. And I think, again, if you just fell the other way, You've mm-hmm. been fine. I think we would have been fine. Yeah. Just... The whole incident of the what happened was very peculiar itself. I mean, you you ride up the front wedge of Sub Zero, bounce oh, on that. The best. You almost stick the landing, and then the floor yeah. decides to be angry drone. with you. And the drone hit you. Yes. <laughs> the drone took us out. Sub Zero with the knockout. Yes. Pin. 
I love <laughs> drones. I want more drones in BattleBots. I want all the flamethrowing drones that you could possibly have. So I am very excited that Spitfire took us out. I am so proud of Spitfire. I want more Spitfires. People, if you want to win BattleBots, make Spitfire copies. Please stop copying Night Force. Copy Spitfire. I can hear, <laughs> I can hear Anthony Murney in my head. He just loves Spitfire and just wants it to win everything. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, I love Spitfire. I love Spitfire, Spitfire, so Spitfire has been through the screws. It's, it, it, yes. got, it got hit in this competition. And, and then yes. it, it's, oh, God bless Spitfire. I mean, we'll, we'll get to its fate <laughs> later on. But <laughs> yes. oh, I'm goodness. glad we took it out. Shit. I am glad that, you know, we got an eye for an eye there. Yeah. But oh, <laughs> I goodness, am glad it, it was a mutual destruction, and I love it. <laughs> it was so fabulous. They, they showed me, they brought it up to me afterwards. They're like, look. I was like, yeah, you took us out. <laughs> And you know we love we love Sub Zero so much. Like again, like like he used our our logo on his robot. Like that's how much we love Sub Zero. And like like they're just so fabulous. I have no like I have no problem with them winning. I'm so happy for them to win. I was very upset we did the thing again. Obviously, like because you know like you like you you do so much effort into it and and it was exceptionally hard for me because before the event i had told my team i was like i was like it is 100 percent going to do the thing because it does the thing i had 3d printed a little um one pound malice just for fun you know what i'm saying to compete yeah. in a little ant event in maryland and it did the thing so i was like oh this malice is gonna do the thing and my team was like no 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 and i very much trust my team i trust my team in everything like when they say something i believe them more than i believe myself by far so so it was really exceptionally hard for me because i was like oh i told you yeah. guys it was it was like, difficult to watch because it's like you guys yeah. in the first 30 seconds just tear mm -hmm. the entire Dominating. side off of sub-zero oh yeah we, and, I did not think we were going to do that well against Sub Zero, and we did, like, because you know they had just beat Valkyrie, which is like my hero, and so I was like, I was like, oh, yay! Look, we're doing what my hero couldn't, and then we we did not do what my hero couldn't. I got cocky. Oh, that's where you know the egg on my face. Yeah, See? all ties back to it. Uh, <laughs> Your pride cometh before a fall. <laughs> I mean, it, it must it must be quite encouraging knowing that you were, you were that close to fighting Witch Doctor, oh, and, yeah. and you know you, you've been through Tracer, who, as we said, you know has improved throughout the competition. Huge, who is an established veteran, and Sub Zero as well to a to a degree as well is now established. I will never be upset about a loss. I just won't. No. Like I just can't. I just am so excited just to be there and just to like be around these people like they're so wonderful i'm never gonna be like oh my god i can't believe you beat me stop like, like it's just not who i am i can't i'm just so excited that they won yeah. it was it was Thank a great moment and it was a great moment again you know obviously we, we saw it once already with with matt Catter, but to, to see it to see you do the thing again it, it was pretty pretty fun to it watch. was lovely right <laughs> it was good tv i don't care what people say it got people talking <laughs> absolutely that's the thing as well right you, you, gotta, you gotta think yeah. of it like that yeah, yeah, I'm not upset. No, we we have no problem with trying things and failing. We are not a that David Rush got upset. He had to leave for yeah. Like, he he an smacked hour the box. Half. I got I, I I see him lift. God dang it! And then he just looks at he looks at the camera and just yeah. goes. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Yeah, he he needed some time. It's harder. I think you know not everyone can just brush it off. It is it is hard. It's because again, you've put your whole life into this for six months, or however long it takes to build the robot and get it up and going. So it, it is harder for some people to brush it off than others. But for me, it doesn't. I'm okay with losing. I'm never going to come about back losing. stronger next time for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, sure. You'll sure. iron everything out that happened this time. And no, we won't. We will, well, we will iron everything out that happened this time, but there'll other be, things be new problems. will happen. <laughs> yeah, there'll be new problems. Well, we're going to try and go back you know? and. Yeah, yeah, we put a triangle back end on this year. We took we took Tombstone 2015 and, you know, made it UHMW because we have Isaac on our team and that's his, he's Pope UHMW. Um, <laughs> so we have a triangle back end for the new Malice and it looks lovely. It looks fabulous. So fantastic. Well, I'm excited. It's to also see shorter. It. We're also brushless next year. Ooh. Very fancy. <laughs> Very fancy. Three. You know, the, the two motors that Rotator uses, we're, we're using three of them. Okay. All right. It'll be, fun. It'll be fun. Very good. Very, very good. good. Well, let's play Devil's Advocate. Uh, yes. Let's, let's say you beat Sub-Zero. How do you think mm -hmm. you would have fared against Witch Doctor? Because that's a completely different animal. 
you know, I I wanted to fight them so bad because I just want to go weapon. We never really got to test our weapon because our belts kept breaking. <laughs> so I want to go weapon to weapon with them and find out exactly like because we had we figured out if we stretched out the belts before we figured it out too late in the competition, but if we stretched out the belts, like if we just sat in the test box and ran it for like 15 minutes, it would stretch out the belts enough that it wouldn't shear when uh, we put it in the big box. And I really wanted to test it out and see if we could just go weapon to weapon and break their weapon, even though they, I mean, I, they obviously like early on, they were having weapon breakage, but after they Mm -hmm. fixed it, I wanted to see if we could break their weapon. I really did. I thought we could, we would just go face to face. I mean, that's just who we are. We just like going, just plow into them and see if we can take it. Um, And I really wanted to see that. And I still really want to see that. So now I was calling out Tombstone this whole time, but I really want to call out both Tombstone and Witch Doctor. I know everyone does this. Everyone's like, I want to take on the big dogs, but I really do. Yeah. (laughs) And I want to see how it would go. I think it would go well. You know, they've been in the sport forever too. So I feel like it would be a really good fight. Yeah. Because we have really good drive and they have really good drive. We have a really good weapon and they have a really good weapon. I want to see it. Yeah, maybe, maybe next year. Do. Maybe next yeah. year, Greg. If you're listening, I'm sure you're not. But if you are, <laughs> okay. first fight, Tombstone versus Malice. Second fight, Witch Doctor versus Malice. So <laughs> just, <laughs> just run back to back. We'll get. We got two robots. We'll do it. Just back to back. We don't even need to charge our batteries. <laughs> In How this reality, up. in this reality, though, yeah. we we did end up with Sub Zero versus Witch Doctor, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, which was lovely. It was lovely, and. Which well, doctor got to show off how powerful it is? Yeah, it it just... I don't know. Andrea got to show how powerful she is because she didn't even need to touch the button to turn it on. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was amazing. amazing. I loved that. That was a yeah. cool. That was All a cool bit. I like that this bit. season. That's my favorite yeah. one yeah. with the sound yeah. effects. Corny, whatever. I don't care. I love it. It's so very cool. cool. It was very cool. I did, did, did enjoy that, and I enjoyed the fight. The fight was mm. short and sweet, and then we mentioned, you know. Poor old Spitfire getting a knockout in the last fight. It got. It, I mean, <laughs> Sub Zero got hit shot. into, into uh, Spitfire. What a shot. Yeah. Just <laughs> driven straight into into Sub Zero. A panel flies off straight into. <laughs> oh man. Such a good drone. You couldn't write it. You really couldn't. That's just. Yeah. That's Will Bale shit there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Witch Doctor and you know, Hypershock have been very similar over the years. They obviously have Tale of the Tape together, and now they're starting to take out drones together. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's yeah. lovely. It's lovely. Uh, poor Sub Zero. I mean, they got wrecked last year by Cobalt, and this was on that kind of scale, wasn't it, really? It that's- felt very similar. It yeah. felt very yeah. similarly. I think they seem to have trouble with verticals. I think yeah. Mike um, has been sort of watching some of the other vert drivers and seeing what they're doing. You know, not letting the opponent land again before they come in for the next hit. It's just always mm. that gut like punch pulled it to him. straight in underneath. Mm-hmm. Bam, they're up again before they come back down again. There they are again, straight back underneath, just ripping the insides out. And it's ooh. It's mean. I think another you thing as well t- you have to consider is that they had a rough season this time around, and they only got was it the two wins in the end mm. against it was against Scorpius and they beat uh, Slamo as well. So you've got to think yeah. they, they've probably been a bit frustrated, and they're probably thinking, okay, well this is our last fight, let's absolutely gun it, and if it dies, mm. it dies. Yeah, and absolutely. They took was, off the entire left side. It was just brutal. the robot, not even just left side of drive. The whole left panel was gone. Mm-hmm. Um, that, one thing, one thing that that's just what's the watch They that just Spitfire rebuilt from hit. us. <laughs> yeah, and like and Sub Zero, like like they had, they were struggling to finish rebuilding after they fought, fought us, and yeah. then to have to go and do it again. Oh my gosh, like uh, that must have been horrible. Yeah, like because they had just like I mean they had I literally mean, like. Yeah, we were lined up ready to take because they weren't sure they could get together. And so, like, even though we had lost, we might have still ended up having to fight Witch Doctor. Luckily, they got it together in time, and I'm really happy they did. But, um, like, we had... It was just devastating that they, like, had to go and rebuild the exact same side of the robot. (laughs) One thing I was going to say was that they had three... Co- uh, wheels of one color and then they had a white wheel from the old one <laughs> yeah it was weird yeah they, com- they yeah. completely ran out of spares they did mint they so did. many they times did. and that that tracks with when you look at who they fought to get to this position and this fight included mm-hmm. i mean they've gone oh, against nothing but spinners in this bounty oh yeah you know, absolutely one of them yeah may not have worked very well but then valkyrie most destructive robot and i'd already got, wrecked it once yeah malice mm-hmm. who'd 
sort of already taken it apart and then mm-hmm. Witch Doctor who's then taken it apart again I mean that yeah. is a brutal lineup. I would not have been shocked if they just threw the whole chassis in the in the garbage like the blacksmiths did. <laughs> it was, yeah, I mean, I think this is the episode where we can kind of consider Sub-Zero now is like pr- a proper, proper high-end battle bot now. Like it was, it was... Agreed. It was kind of like a mid-card of, of, up until this point. You've now got to consider Sub-Zero as not one of the big elite machines yet, but it, like it's something you don't want to see on your fight schedule. Let's say that. It much. went up a tier for sure yeah. this mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty clear. Uh, the, 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 the fact that it was able to not only survive its fights, but win them convincingly in a couple of instances in this episode, it was a really nice showing. And I'm really happy for Logan and his team. I can't wait to see what the improved version of Sub-Zero turns out to be. Mm. Uh, but so in this, oh, yeah, so yeah say, in this fight, yeah. But in this season, once again, without Bronco really to, to speak of, I mean, this was the flipper this year this other than hydra obviously who went very far but you know hydra does it completely differently to the other flippers um Mm -hmm. sub-zero i i draw a lot of similarities to them bronco and Mm -hmm. you know i feel like hydra has skirts bronco doesn't yeah Mm -hmm. yeah maybe if bronco did they wouldn't get quite as beat up by the verts Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. you need to put some skirts on Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm Not Woman up and skirt it up. <laughs> <laughs> just don't work. Um, I do find it quite interesting that so far we've had obviously five bounties. Uh, the two that have survived, Witch Doctor and Tombstone, actually, I know Beta was in this season as well, but it was obviously a new robot coming into the season, whereas Witch Doctor and Tombstone have been c- consistently in battle bots. And obviously Ice Wave was there for one fight and Bronco was there for one fight. So far, those are the only two that have come through the experience and the kind of mm-hmm. almost battle hardened I mean, of the of the bounties have, the, have been the ones that have won which i find quite telling really in the yeah. fact that they've been experience, the most prepared. there's nothing i mean you get rusty in the off season you just do like it's just if you don't go through the tournament you just can't it's just not the same no. everyone's everyone's moved on without you yeah go ahead yeah Kevin. I was just, I was making a bad joke and saying that I really wish I could get rusty in the off season. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, that's next week, Jeff. Everyone God. does. <laughs> Everyone does. Gosh, rusty would be lovely. <sighs> rusty bounty for 2021, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> sign me up. We tried to sign up for all six bounties. They wouldn't let us. Oh. I, I would imagine because <laughs> of how <laughs> grueling they are. Yeah, Tracer I don't know do too. We could have done Tombstone and Witch Doctor. It was awesome. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, they let a couple Both bots do too. too. Yeah, yeah, they'll say Kraken crack, crack next week as well as done as done too. Come on, battle bots. Sort out. Let's, let's have Malice every week. Why not? <laughs> I'm already on all the audience shots. Yeah. <laughs> Ten You're, wheels. Every Come last on. one of them. Every last one. Um, I was not even, in the audience. Even, that even much. more than the Robo Gym guys, because they've been on the TV a lot. Yeah, I've been a lot. Yeah, I was yeah. not in the audience that much. I really wasn't. I was um I was not. <laughs> but you know how it is. Absolutely. That kind of brings us to the end of the Witch Doctor bounty. Um, obviously, Bunny, the end of Malice's season as well. Fabulous. It was lovely. It was everything. It was way more than I ever expected it to be, let me tell obviously, you. Did, did you enjoy being being the head? It's a, you know, obviously, you, you were some of you know one of the parts of the teams with Rex and with Shatter previously. How did you find <sighs> being the being the gal, if you like. Let me tell you, I did not sign up to be captain. I was told I had to be captain <laughs> <laughs> by my team. And, and you know, like it was, um, I really enjoy the robot part, but I have to tell you, uh, I do get a lot of unsolicited messages now. And that is the only part that I don't like about being captain. I get many, I mean, five or six a day and, and it's, it's rough for that but everything else about it i love i love you know um being with the team and making sure that they're shown in the best light um and making sure that the team can be as advertised as they are and and be as out there as they are and get the word out about malice but i really do love malice isaac is just the best designer and he just does things so well and rush like all these guys they they don't they don't believe in themselves enough. And so I think they really do need, do need a cheerleader to, to show them that they are worth what they are worth. You know what I'm saying? And, and so I'm happy to do that for them, but it is, it is rough to get 
messages all sure. the time. Yeah, but, I, mean, I can imagine. The <laughs> yeah. You have, you have to think as well, this year, I mean, we've we obviously seen yourself come through with, with Malice. We've seen Valkyrie go to new heights. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we've I'm had sure Witch Doctor in the past the same well. amount of messages. Exactly. Like, I, I, it's It's been great to see a lot more establishing of the female captains that have been around mm-hmm. because it's it's been a real thing for Battle do, since the show's come back. I think yeah. that it's been, it's, been it's a male dominated sport. Yeah, I mean, sure. that's obvious, but we're yeah. getting the, like, like it's, I mean, uh, I you, think you that the more the female the captains there are, the less it's going to happen. And so that's what I yeah, keep telling myself exactly. every time, every time I'm like, so. you know what, I'm getting this. So someone else doesn't have to. And I think that's the best, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So this episode yeah, it, sorry things. to drag the podcast down. I apologize, <laughs> no, but that no, no, is absolutely. the only this, challenge. This is, this is the, good stuff. <laughs> the honest, the honest God truth. The only challenge about being captain is that. So it's it's a good problem to have, I guess. Of all the things like that, you know, I have to deal with. I guess it's not that bad, you know. Sure. Uh, you were saying, Jevin? Yeah. Yeah. This episode just a, a brilliant showcase of um, some of the some of the ladies in the sport. It's you know, you guys have some of the best and, and most destructive robots out there. And advanced as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean... Yeah. Well, we've said hijinks as well this season. Yeah, we can't forget Jen and, and hijinks. That's been yes, wonderful absolutely, to watch as well. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure they did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, been, it's been nice to see. And I think, you know, credit to all of you. I know, I, obviously, I appreciate that there are some strange people out there in the world who do these kind of things. <laughs> but I, 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 yeah. I, I hope it isn't for that much longer that this kind of thing gets goes on because yeah i like i said i think it's it's good that i'm strong enough to take it i'm glad to do it for for however long it needs to take for the whole world to change (laughs) (laughs) and so i'm happy to be there for (laughs) and i am happy to be there for my team and like i said i really do believe that they don't they don't have that confidence on their own and they do need someone to be out there and and telling the world how fabulous and wonderful they are so going on with confidence and going on with what the future brings I know you've talked about Malice a little bit and some improvements you guys are making. What's it going to take to get Malice to really... I know you guys aren't there to win the nut, but what's it going to take to maybe break the round of 16 or the round of 8? Um, I think just continuing with what we do well, which is not having that fear of failure, it, continuing to have that wanting to try new things and to, to push the boundaries of what we're doing. Um, we're also changing our weapon next year. So we're going to completely, um, I think it's a new concept. I don't think it's been done before. We are having a central hub that will have all the attachments of the weapon bolt onto that central hub. So the hub will never change and the appearance of the actual weapon won't change, but what it is constructed of will change based on who we're fighting. Um, and then we're also doing 3D printed gears, which I know have been done in heavyweights, but we're doing it um, pretty much in a new way Um that hasn't been done before that we're aware of. And so I think that is what we need. And, and to improve on our mistakes that we've made in the past, we try not to repeat mistakes, but sometimes it happens. So we just need to continue that as well. So we're going to continue pushing what we think is possible in combat robotics and just continue with, in our, in our mind, we were successful this year because we did, we, we proved that we could do this in a way that other people haven't done it yet with through bolts and this yep. massive spinning drum. Um, horizontal head. drumettes. Horizontal drumettes. <laughs> Where's that on your chart, Jevin? Yeah, I know. He's not it's, looking at me. <laughs> he's so upset. I'm so sorry for people that don't agree that it's a drumette. Um, it's, it's a flat pancake. The- My favorite description of our weapon is a flat pancake weapon. It's like um, the only way I want to describe it now is a flat pancake weapon. It's tasty. Um, it's so tasty. Oh, it's so good. Um, so yeah, definitely just uh, continue imp- making improvements to fix the mistakes that we have, like putting a triangle back end on it. So there's absolutely no way that someone could say, oh, just stick a bolt on it. And and continuing with what we know works. Like our drive, we're not changing our drive. Our drive, well, we are switching from 16 to 1 to 12 to 1 because we don't think that we need the top speed that we had, I think that we can go a little bit slower and still be successful. Um, yeah, more torquey, and that'll be great. So uh, we are we are keeping the same drive set up because that worked flawlessly. And we're going to change the weapon a little bit um, so we stop breaking belts. Uh, we are going with the Kevlar V belts, and we're going to stick a V on the back of it. So 
I think it'll be great. Very exciting. I think another thing for, for me, as we kind of wrap up, is like just the amount of passion that you have for this sport. I mean, this yeah. is ridiculous. Like the excitement that you bring. We saw it all season with the interviews, yeah. you know, just even after the first fight with Axe Backwards, you know, you were almost in tears. <laughs> just the, yeah. the, the sheer oh, I was. It's I was been... so embarrassed to cry on TV fights. Oh my God. <laughs> Fine. I am You're not so a crier, excited. I swear to God. I know. <laughs> I just get to, and you know, normally I have this trick where I do math in my head so I don't cry. But uh, like, like, but it just wasn't working. <laughs> and, uh, I am at the very core a fan first because these people are my whole family. Like uh, this robot combat has been the only thing that's been consistent in my entire life. I've been doing this since I was, you know, a child. I was literally 11 when I started and I'm 30 now. So I've been doing it more than half my life. And these people, they made me who I am. Like these aren't just, you know, people that you see on TV to me. These are people that I grew up with. These are people who changed my life. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's definitely for me, I would do anything for any of them. Like at, at any point, like I, I can't tell you how many times I've made logos or t-shirts or, or intro videos, like the new Scorpios intro video or the claw viper logo. That's all me. But like, because I want to help all of these people showcase how wonderful they are and all these people showcase how wonderful the sport is because the more people that get into this sport the more people will be touched by how wonderful this community is and how yeah. perfect it is and how yeah. everyone is just so supportive and, and builds you up and just makes you the best person that you can be if if there's been one constant throughout the entire time that we've been talking with you is your passion is infectious uh, oh, what, you're, you, you, you honestly embody everything that this sport really needs to be. Mm. Uh, and I really appreciate that. Uh, it's like the, <laughs> from, from, from end to end, it's just the, you, you, just, uh, and I, I like that you're able, able to share that with the other teams and stuff like that. Um, but it's, it's, it's really cool. Uh, so oh, I'm, I'm so nice. yeah, no, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean that sincerely. I mean that sincerely. I, I really appreciate it. It's really nice yeah. of you. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that's a, I think that's a really, really nice way to wrap things up. I think that's been probably one of the most wholesome podcasts we've ever done. Wholesome. wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> I bring you to dark places. I bring you to wholesome places. It happens. That's what it has to be. I have right? a range. <laughs> <laughs> With all that said, I have been Sam Elliott, 64. I've been Steve, the American Killjoy. I have been Walter Woodrow. And I have been Bunny from Team Malice. You have indeed. And the three of you will see you next week for the last of BattleBots Bounty Hunters. Sad, it's got to come Yay. to an end. I know. Oh, but, you know, it'll, it'll continue. Go to little robot events. Build yes. a tiny robot. It's fun, I promise. It absolutely is. I can't stress that enough. We'll see you yeah. next week for that. But um, yeah, take care, everyone. Rusty is coming. No. <laughs> <laughs>